Hello, and welcome to TSFA Virtual Classroom. My name is Susan Pylan, Texas Master Florist. And I'm Cassie Baker, Texas Master Florist. We're instructors with the Texas State Florist Association, and today we're going to go over some different design ideas, as well as some helpful tips and tricks that you will need to know when operating the Flower Club of the Month. This is a great program. Some people use it to offer in additional funds for your organization. Some people use it as a way to give students um, some experience in creating designs for customers. So there's a few tricks that you need to know with this, and we're just gonna kind of review that, as well as give you some different options for what you might do each month. One of the most important things that you need to know whenever you're selling a product to a customer, especially if it's a floral product, whether it's fresh cut flowers or plants, through the state of Texas, you are required to have a Texas floral license. And this is required by the Texas Agriculture Department. You can obtain this license through texasagriculture.gov, and that's where you're gonna start at with the application process. One thing to remember, you might wanna fill this out during the summer, so that way you can make sure that it's effective by the beginning of the school year. Something else, whenever you have this, it does lead to them coming and inspecting. Some teachers have recommended that they like to apply during the summer because it cuts off some time when they will come and inspect you and you have less product available during the summer because they said that they've typically been inspected during the oh, summer. Yeah. So. That's good. Yeah. Okay, let's get started with some other things that's real important for the teachers to know. Another thing that you need to know is that you want to make sure and prepare a contract and have it set up for your, you know, these people that you're selling to, they're going to be your customers. So you want to make sure and have that contract ready so that way they know what they're getting as well as you know what you're selling. It's just a great way to have everything uniform as well. Go ahead and have them prepay for that too so that way you have everything there and you have your money up front right. and you know what your budget's going to be throughout the year. Yes. It's a great thing to do. One thing that you want to make sure and offer with this contract is you want to have your holiday options as well as make it something monthly. That way you have the product and your, you know, your students are creating designs for them every month and who doesn't love getting flowers once a month? Right. I think that's a great idea. And then we're going to keep in mind our cost at Valentine's Day and for Mother's Day because our flowers are going to be a little bit more expensive. So with that, with those flowers being a little bit more expensive, sometimes an arrangement that you might make one month might actually be valued a little bit less than it is another month. But throughout that entire time and that entire contract, your budget is going to balance out and everything's going to be averaged out throughout the entire time. So that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. And then we want to make sure that um, when you're buying your product, if you could order through TSFA uh, underwriters, that would be great. Your local wholesalers. And then again, you're going to want to probably purchase some items from retail local places as well, just to cut down on some of the right. costs. And with making those purchases, you don't know what those costs are going to be. And you also don't know what product's going to be available. So something to remember is whenever you have those descriptions in your contract, make sure and keep it simple because yes. you don't know what it's going to, you know, what products you might be able to obtain. Mm -hmm. You might be able to get something now during the summer that might not be available, say, come December or January. Right. So you want to make sure and have that generic description so that way they know, you know, you're not guaranteeing them, oh, you're going to get red roses and for some reason red roses are not available. Yeah. You're just going to give a color description instead of a specific product. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, colors are great or a theme for uh, holidays, fun too. And that way the flowers can just kind of be what um, is most cost effective for that month. Definitely. You definitely want to be cost effective and, you know, not sell specific. And like Susan said, you know, Keep and have your um, themes. I love themes whenever we're creating products. So let's go over some themes that we've came up with for each month. We're going to start with September because August, you're just getting settled. You're just right. getting back into the classroom. Your students are adjusting in most cases. August is a great time to review those principles and elements with your students and have them kind of refresh on the basics. Right. So we're going to start with September. September is, you know, whenever you're gathering back, people like to have socials. I think of ice cream socials whenever we're gathering back. This arrangement is a fun little ice cream sundae that we've made out of carnations, and then we have a cherry on top. Our cherry is made out of a rose, and again, it's just something simple. This is going to be one of those less expensive arrangements that we were talking about, but again, it's all going to balance out. And very long-lasting with the carnations and the rose. All you have to do is keep it filled with water, and it's going to last for many weeks. Exactly. And uh, And they can repurpose the vase. Or yes. the mug as well. The mug is definitely repurposable. That's something that I like to look at whenever I'm creating designs. I like to have things that are repurposed. Otherwise, it's just going to end up in the trash. 
So something that you can think about to avoid having your consumer throw those away, offer them a discount if they want to repurpose those vases and maybe do the club again next year, offer them a discount on that. So that's a great thing to keep in mind. Okay, now let's go on to the next month. Next we have October. Who doesn't love a spooky and sweet arrangement? <laughs> Isn't that fun? We're now with this design, we are going with the asymmetrical triangle with our mums. And then we have forged some branches from the schoolyard. And then we have a little bit of moss. We have made a fun little spider there. And then we've made some little pom-poms with some ribbon. And then we've got a fun mug that can be reused again as well. Again, you know, it's repurposable and that's a great thing to do. And you can also make sure and save those costs whenever you're out foraging things. Just make sure whenever you're foraging things that you don't have any type of bugs or pests or insects or anything like that. Because if you were to get <laughs> inspected during that month and say pests were to be found, it's something that you can be docked for. And yeah. so just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay. But it does save down on some of the costs. So that's yes. a good thing to it's do. It's definitely a good cost effective thing. Something. Next, we have November. November's Thanksgiving. No Thanksgiving table is going to be complete without a centerpiece. This one we actually made in a butternut squash because, again, it's based off of what was available whenever we were creating. And so we use the butternut squash. But typically in November, you'd want to use like a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. A pie pumpkin's a great option because it is smaller. Or if you want to go larger... The Cinderella pumpkins are always beautiful, right. and plus it keeps it low. Yes. And then you can also, we've embellished with some of the dried material, and that's nice and preserved. And so your arrangement, even maybe once the flowers have gone, all your nice preserved and dried material is still going to be in your floral arrangement and keep it pretty. And the great way to create this is actually you're going to carve out whatever your vessel is that you choose to use, whatever type of produce it is. You want to make sure and carve that out and use a liner and then put foam in it. And so that's a great thing. You can mm -hmm. also go to the TSFA classroom and get the simple, um, there's a video on how to make a not as elaborate, elaborate yeah. arrangement. And so, and it also has the step-by-step. -step. There's also instructions on how to make the elongated um, centerpiece in your books. Yes. Oh, great. Next Beautiful. we have Christmas. Ooh. And Christmas isn't complete without a Christmas tree. But we don't want to make just a regular Christmas tree. We've got Mascotville trees for you. Mascot, Schoolville, isn't this fun little look? Now, we did forage this greenery, and like we were saying before, we want to make sure things are pest-free. But uh, And we inserted a nice heavy wire inside of your arrangement to give that fun curve. And then we've wrapped the cedar with some bouillon and then placed it into the foam. Um, another thing that's fun, you can intertwine even some um, artificial types of greenery if you want it to be even a little more long-lasting. And then there's all sorts of little fun um, uh, little novelty pieces you can put in your tree. And we did lime greens and whites and reds, just kind of a traditional look. But you could even make this more fun with some bright colors for even uh, a more exciting Christmas exactly. centerpiece. So, I mean, again, we forage the cedar, so that's a great option. You can also order your cedar in from your local wholesales, yes. and they'll have it available. You might want to order that in November, though. That way mm -hmm. they know that, you know, you are going to need it and that they'll have it available for you. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until you're ready for it. You know, that's a great tip for all year long. Whenever you make that contract and you know that you're going to be selling a certain number of these designs, go ahead and let your wholesale know that you need that, and they can go ahead and get that ordered for you. And that's going to be a great way to ensure that your product is available versus to waiting till the week that you need it because they might not have it available. Another uh, thing you need to keep in consideration and tell the consumer is with fresh Christmas greens, they tend to drink a lot of water. So they're going to want to make sure they fill their vessel pretty regularly because yes. they do drink a lot more than cut flowers. Because if this dies, somebody might become a real Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have January. When I think of January, I think of New Year's. And New Year's, of course, you've got fireworks. So we've got a topiary made with Ostromeria. It's, I mean, it's a real rising arrangement. Mm -hmm. And this is easily made by gathering your Ostromeria up at the top, clustering them, and then inserting them into the foam. And we've cleaned up all the foliage down here. And then we have a really pretty simple braided technique uh, with the ribbon. And then a little bit, we did go ahead and use some evergreens at the base 
but you could do a mixed greenery. You could just do all greens down at the base or add in a little bit of flower embellishment as well. I think adding the evergreens into it just kind of helps with that, you know, add in more of that winter fill. It's yes. definitely a great option. You could also embellish this with some snowflakes that you might have mm -hmm. left over from Christmas arrangements. You could sprinkle some glitter on it and pretend mm -hmm. that it's snow or some dew. I mean, there's all sorts of fun things that you can do to accent and, you know, just kind of upgrade and elevate your arrangement. Okay. Let's so next we have Valentine's. All right. And I'm going to be honest, the cost of flowers at Valentine's does go up. So there's all sorts of different options available. Ooh, love is in the air with this beautiful arrangement. So we used the Bells of Ireland and we've wrapped it with the Oasis or Oasis wire, or the round wire. Mm -hmm. And that's a great thing to do because it helps you be able to manipulate the product to create that heart shape. Right. Um, we've used the Gerber daisies in the center as well as some mini carnations. So one thing that you want to remember, if these products are not available or maybe it's outside of your budget, there's other options. You know, you might think that a lily stem might be mm -hmm. too expensive. We have multiple blooms on that lily, so you could always cut those apart and put each stem in individually. Right. Another option, use carnations. Use yes. the hydrangea. Just You want something large to be down there for your focal point. Right. And, and if you didn't have the Bells of Ireland, you could use foliage like Italian Ruscus or even some myrtle. Italian Ruscus, heart. I think, is another great yes. option. So, yeah. Yes. It, another option would be Curly Willow. I yeah, mean, you could always sure. use Curly Willow to yeah. make that. Absolutely. So. That'd be really good and cost-effective. Yes. So. Right. Next, March. I mean, who doesn't want the luck of the Irish on their side? <laughs> All right. I mean, I would like a pot of gold delivered to me. <laughs> and this design is just a real typical round uh, symmetrical arrangement. And we added in a little bit of the um, holiday charm with our four leaf. Oh, no, that's a three leaf. It's only clove. a three leaf clover. Oh, gosh. Oh. This leprechaun <laughs> is in trouble. Yeah. This <laughs> leprechaun might not be so lucky. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Um, but again, you know, if you need the instructions on how to make a round arrangement, that's going to be in the TSFA classroom book as well. And so that's a great option. You know, this is just a great way to let your students practice, practice making those arrangements. And then we have this simple little container for our pot of gold, but you could always take any type of container, spray paint it gold or embellish it with some gold ribbon. And mm -hmm. then we have the little coins uh, added in out of some of that. We've it, actually made the coins yeah. out of flat wire. It's yes, an Oasis product that's a great and available to use. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay. So. Great. Next we have April, spring. Who doesn't love spring? Mm, I love this watering can. In this floral arrangement, we've done some groupings with our Monica Casina and then with our tulips. And then we have a nice, beautiful hydrangea clustered. Now, a lot of times, Hydrangea can tend to be more expensive, but look, you, we're only using one, and we and, don't have a lot of. And that one takes up a lot of space, and so yes. it's cost effective because you don't have to use a lot of other product mm -hmm. to fill mm -hmm. in that space. And then our container, we bought it uh, inexpensively; it was less than five dollars. So you don't have a whole lot of money into this arrangement, right. especially if you're going to be doing, you know, twenty-five dollars or something like that. It's kind of a good average on a flower right. of the month club. And the great thing about this is it's in bunches. And so bunches are really easy to create an arrangement with because you just make the bunch and you stick it mm -hmm. in their face. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like she said, this watering can, it was really expen inexpensive. It's a nice container and it's something that people could repurpose. They could either add um, preserved flowers or you sure. could do permanent botanicals into it. Mm -hmm. And that way, if somebody wanted to display it year round, they definitely could. Another thing is it held water great. So anytime you're going to use a metal container, you want to make sure and test it first and yes. pour water in it and make sure, set it on a paper towel, make sure it's not going to um, be leaking because that does happen on occasion. You know, I've used wooden containers and that same thing has happened. Mm -hmm. They even have a liner in it and they still leak through that liner. So that's always a great thing you want to make sure because you don't want to send somebody an arrangement and then have water leak all over their desk, mm. run paperwork, run that desk, something yeah. like that. You definitely want to keep that in mind and check and make sure that it's going to hold the water. If for some reason you notice that it starts leaking, you, a simple way to fix that, if you don't have a liner that's going to fix this, sometimes we'll use plastic cups that fit mm -hmm. inside. Another yeah. option is just cellophane. You can use cellophane and create mm -hmm. that liner. Or trash, like a trash bag yeah. or some type of a big Ziploc so, bag. Just something that's not going to um, create, get a hole in it easily. Yeah, so, definitely. Yes. Okay. So, and next up is May. We have this lovely can of plants. I mean, <laughs> the great thing about this is this container is 
so inexpensive. Right. You can actually probably get it from your cafeteria. It's one of the large cans that the school uses whenever yeah. they're making their With lunches. Their vegetables or canned fruit or whatever they may have in there. And then, so just go to your cafeteria, ask them to save those for you, and then you can paint it, spray paint it, paint it. Uh, Decoupage. Decoupa yes. We I just mean, added real simple, like this is a birch ribbon around it. And then the plants that we added, we just got those, uh, and they were the four, the six pack of plants, and you can divide that out. Between several, between arrangements. several arrangements. So it's I mean, very low in cost. Exactly. So if you didn't have as large of a can and you wanted to just do like even one of that six pack, that's an option. So I mean, you can make this work for any budget. If you mm -hmm. wanted to go larger, you definitely can. If you wanted to go smaller, you definitely mm -hmm. can. But I mean, it's a great thing because you can personalize it too and your students can make it their own as far as what they're gonna give. This might be a great time as well for your students to send a thank you note to those consumers who have purchased from you throughout the year letting them know that they appreciated, you know, being able to yes. make their designs. Definitely. And so that way it's something, you know, that they'll want to come back. Now, one thing we did on the canned, if it's going to be going outside, you'd want to punch some holes in the bottom for drainage. Um, and, but the thing is, is if it's going to stay indoors, what we did is we added a little bit of gravel, a little bit of rocks on the bottom for the drainage and then added the soil in and then planted the little plants. We have some petunias and some marigolds little myrtle, a little ivy over have a little here, ivy cascading. So we have some height, we have some uh, bulk in here, and then you're going to have this cascading over. And we added some like little, little branch. moss birch branches yeah. are great. And, you know, the little butterfly just helps add a little spring accent to it. So right. it's definitely a great thing. And you know, it's something that's going to keep blooming all summer. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help them remember you come the fall and they're ready to go again. And they're going to be like, oh, what kind of exciting, you know, arrangements are we going to get mm -hmm. this year? And one thing, you don't have to overfill this because it's going to continue through the summer to add more foliage and blooms to it. So you don't want to overpack it at the beginning. So one thing to remember, as you've completed your designs, before you get ready to send them out, either yourself as the instructor or maybe some more advanced students, you might want to have them inspect the arrangements before they yes. go out. Because you want to make sure if there's a bloom on there that maybe doesn't look so great, you can switch that out before it goes. It's better to do it before it leaves the shop or leaves the classroom than have that customer call you and be like, well, these are kind of dying. It's a quality you know? control. Yes. And we do it in the, in the florist as well as what you're going to be doing in the classroom. So yes. it's something that we all inspect before it goes out on delivery. Yes. And y'all should do it as well. Yes. And so, I mean, just, you know... Remember to keep things simple as you're making it because you might be having to mass produce it. You never know what's gonna happen throughout the year. Yes. You never know what students are gonna be in the class and how many. You might wanna even keep a limit on how many of the um, Flower Club of the Months that you offer because mm -hmm. you definitely have to make sure and keep it in control with what you're able to produce and what right. your students are available to do. And always remember to reach out to your other fellow floral design teachers in, here in Texas and get some ideas from them if you need help setting up the classroom, if you need ideas on an order form uh, or what's been successful with them. Yes. And um, and that's always great. They're yes. a wonderful resource to go to. Yes, I know there are several teachers who have this program already into effect. And you know, anytime I've reached out to them, honestly, just to kind of get some tips on you know what they had to do and what they went through to be able to get things started. So that way I would have a little bit more knowledge to be able to, you know, provide as well. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out to them. You can also always contact the Texas State Florist Association office with questions and we'd be more than happy to help you. If for some reason the answer is not readily available, they'll get that and get back to you or have somebody available who can get back to you to provide that answer. Okay, great. Thank you for joining us today. All right, thank you and good luck.